Mark chapter 2. When he returned to Capernaum, after some days, it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, My son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or, rise, take up your bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your mat, your bed, and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Well, uh, very dramatic. Uh, chapter 2 opens with this very dramatic uh, miracle uh, by Jesus, this a paralytic man uh, lowered uh, from the roof in front of Jesus, who's uh, teaching. Interesting, the, the description that Mark gives, he's preaching the word uh, to them, um, teaching them the word of God. And uh, Jesus does the unexpected thing of not uh, healing this man immediately, but pronouncing forgiveness uh, over him. And I guess that shows us um, that the man's uh, fundamental need was for forgiveness. It's uh, not that his uh, physical condition was connected to his um, uh, his sin. I think it's more showing that Jesus uh, has come to forgive sins. That's the most important thing that he can do for this man. Obviously, the people uh, watching uh, react in their hearts. Mark tells us uh, the leaders, and they don't like this. They think that it's blasphemy, uh, that because only God can forgive sins. And then Jesus, uh, to, to prove that he has authority to forgive sins, uh, he, he heals the man. And uh, his healing uh, shows that he has been granted authority uh, to forgive sins. So uh, the man uh, walks out uh, healed and forgiven. I guess there's an interesting question uh, in verse 10. Um, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Uh, is Jesus saying to uh, those who were in their hearts accusing him of blasphemy, uh, no, you're wrong, I am God and I'm going to show you, or no, you're wrong, it's, only, um, it, it's not only God who can forgive sins, but I, the Son of Man, I've been given authority by God uh, to forgive sins. So is his action a, a, a kind of claim to, uh, to deity, or is it a revelation uh, that he, the Son of Man, has a authority to forgive sins. I think uh, th there's an artificial distinction there. I think he is the, the Son of Man. Uh, that term from Daniel 7, he is that exalted uh, figure who's still a human being and he has authority to forgive sins. But I think Mark also presents Jesus as divine. Um, we saw that right at the beginning in chapter 1, the Isaiah quote that expects the coming of God is applied to Jesus. Uh, we also see it uh, later in this ch chapter in a, in a, um, in a kind of a, an aside uh, in Jesus' discussion about uh, fasting with the Pharisees. Uh, the reason that um, uh, it's, it's the, 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 uh, his disciples are not fasting is, Jesus says in verse 10, because they, they can't, the wedding guests can't fast when the bridegroom is with them. That would be inappropriate. Jesus uh, referenced himself as the bridegroom. Again, that's a very common uh, description of uh, God in the Old Testament. Now that in itself is, you know, not not that significant. But when you combine that with um, other things that we see in the Gospel, and uh, we'll see in in uh, uh, later chapters, uh, you know, Jesus controlling the wind and the waves, Jesus even walking on the wind and the waves, Jesus providing food. We see this picture of Jesus being built up. Where yes, he is the Son of Man who has authority to forgive sins on earth, but he is also uh, the divine uh, son of God. So we're seeing uh, Jesus' authority. Um, we also see um, his uh, tender, caring side. He does heal this man. He forgives him. We see that in the call of uh, Levi, a tax collector despised uh, by um, uh, his fellow countrymen. 
and um, uh, he's invited uh, with uh, other tax, collect tax collectors and sinners to uh, to eat with Jesus uh, in verse uh, 15. And again, the scribes and the Pharisees object to this. Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus says, it, 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 those who are well have no need of a doctor, uh, but the sick. I've not come to call the righteous, those who think they're righteous, uh, but sinners. Jesus has come for sinners. There's a wonderful picture we're getting here. You know, he's come to forgive. He's come to call sinners. Um, and uh, this next section, this interaction about fasting, uh, um, you know, when, when he's taken away, that's when they'll fast. And there's a pointer to his death, that it's his death uh, will be the time when they, they fast. But the Pharisees are trying to fit um, Jesus into old structures. And Jesus says, you can't do that. And he uh, talks about putting the wine, new wine uh, into old wine skins. If you do that, the wine will burst and the wine is destroyed. New wine is for fresh wine skins. Uh, Jesus uh, coming, bringing the kingdom in is, is something fresh. Um, that is, uh, it can't be fit, fit into the old structures. Uh, the, the verse, uh, the chapter finishes with um, the first of his uh, Sabbath controversies. Uh, the disciples uh, pluck grain on the Sabbath, which some uh, Jews would have interpreted as work and so inappropriate for um, uh, doing on the Sabbath. And uh, Jesus' argument is, uh, you know, David uh, actually broke the law uh, of Moses in that he took from the bread of the presence, which he should have shouldn't have done, to feed uh, his followers. And uh, the understanding seems to be uh, that you know the the law, like the, the Sabbath law, is made for humanity's good. It's not the other way around. And so uh, to allow his disciples to uh, to feed themselves on the Sabbath uh, is in line with the intention of the Sabbath. And in making that pronouncement. Uh, Jesus himself underlines again his authority. Uh, the last verse in the chapter, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So I guess we're getting two themes coming through this chapter, his authority, uh, but also his uh, compassion uh, to provide uh, for uh, people and to bring them uh, forgiveness. And that's in contrast to the uh, Jewish leaders who are criticizing him for those very things. Uh, what a wonderful savior we have, uh, powerful uh, but uh, compassionate and forgiving. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for Jesus, uh, powerful enough uh, to do these uh, miracles that we see, uh, healing this man, uh, this paralyzed man, uh, but so compassionate and uh, forgiving, uh, who came for sinners like us. Uh, we thank you for Jesus uh, in his name. Amen. Mm -hmm.